in Pokemon Blue non-randomizer. Now, if you take a look at our rankings here above my head, we have done Kabuto without evolving because we only do the evolving thing in randomizers. Now, as you can see, um, Kabuto looks like it's last. Unfortunately, um, it does appear that when I was making a transition into adding a new row to my leaderboard, I did screw up the rankings. It appears that I accidentally moved up Butterfree and Beedrill. So actually, it's third from last. But it's still third from last. Now, here's the big difference. Um, when it comes down to the fossil races, I think it goes down to which fossil you're talking about. If you're allowed to evolve, it's Kabutops. If you are sticking with the starter and you're not allowed to evolve, it's uh, Ammonite. If it starts out as an evolved Pokemon, it's Kabutops. Now, the one where you're allowing the evolution, that one's probably iffy. I don't actually know that one. But I can tell you right now, they have big differences, which definitely do not highlight their strengths. So if you guys don't already know anything about these two fossil Pokemon, they're both rock and water type. It's actually a pretty good combination. Um, you don't have a lot of dual weaknesses, and the one dual weakness you have is not that popular other than Erica's Gym. So it's not that bad. However, one of the problems is they're both they're both balanced in very different ways. Kabuto is balanced with high special. Kabuto Tops, or sorry, uh, not Kabuto. Ammonite has got high special. Kabuto has got high attack. Now, normally, this is usually complemented by a bunch of other good moves. Now, of course, these moves, as you can see here with the Kabutops moveset, we've got Bubble Beam, Water Gun, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Surf. We got great special moves. And Ammonite slash Amistar gets these moves too. So it's really effective to have special. Now, there is something that changes in this run. So Kabuto does not get that second TM you see there on the list. Swords Dance. And that's why the evolution makes all the difference in this run. If you are allowed to evolve, you gain access to Sword Stance, and Sword Stance is the big difference maker. Even if you were allowed to use Sword Stance on Amistar, then I think it would still also be a pretty close race. Sword Stance is one of the best moves in the game. You know, it it badge boosts the rest of your stats, and you even if you do level up, you still get to keep the attack boost. And it's also just a good move overall. But anyways, um... If you take a look at the moveset here, I think we've got a lot of good things that we can work with. Unfortunately, there are also a lot of bad things about this run. Um, for starters, Brock, not going to be the greatest. But we do have Absorb, but we do have 70 special. Ignore the 65, it is 70. Right here it says 70 in Generation 1. Now, we're just going to have to probably get just a smidge more levels than we think we're going to need. With a four times we weakness, Brock shouldn't be that much of an issue, but with a bad special attacker, with a bad special move, you can't not be too careful. So I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is trying getting myself to level 13 before I face Brock. And I don't think this is going to be too difficult. We are in the medium fast level up group, which is going to be pretty decent overall. Anyways. Uh, I think that's enough strategy. Um, the only points of contention that I think I'm going to end up running in with, with are Starmie from, uh, from Misty and Gyarados from Lance. Uh, if you're wondering why those two Pokemon specifically, it's because they default to water moves. Um, Lance is a little bit more random, but uh, Misty has got good AI, so she will 100% even though technically it's a neutral affected move because we are part water type, it goes by the first typing. And unfortunately our first typing is rock type, so it thinks it's super effective. Which, I mean, to be fair, it is super effective. As far as, like, you know, moves to choose for her. So, let's go ahead and switch over. 
And Lance, for obvious reasons, we're probably just going to have to get, get a lucky crit on Body Slam. But, you know, we got resets to spare. Lance's first Pokemon is Gyarados, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, let me keep up with the comments here. Uh, I didn't even notice you were live, and I was just waiting for you to go live. Uh, just have... Or, just some I have wanted to try out. Crobat, Porygon 2, Aerodactyl, Victory Bell, and Crystal. Aerodactyl and Dodrio in yellow. I don't steam or post videos, though, so, like, eh, there are so many of you. Uh, that already post videos that do a great job with it. Um, I can already tell you right now, you don't want to do Aerodactyl in yellow. Aerodactyl is bad. End of story. Dodrio is great. Um, if I were to compare two Pokemon, I'd love to compare Firo and Dodrio. Those would be really cool to race. Anyways. Reset our timer. All right. Um, this first run is going to be in an emphasis. There are going to be two runs here. I'm going to play a lot riskier in a lot lower level on this first run. And I just want to test the game. I want to test to see what I'm capable of doing. So, um, in my heart of hearts, I think I'm going to have to end up getting body slam and backtracking to defeat Misty. But in this first run, we're going to try with Scratch. I don't think it's going to work out, but we're going to try. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and I do have the Gen 2 mod so it does look like gen 2 if any of you guys are wondering why it looks so different oh wow i just forgot to grab the potion that's interesting that's very unlike me All right, and we are going to nickname our Pokemon Sickle. Uh, a lot of move choices for, for, or sorry, a lot of name choices for Rhydon and Amistar, but not necessarily Kabutops, which I'm fine with. Not a big deal. It's nice that Squirtle doesn't have a water move yet. Um, does anybody remember if the optional rival has bubble I feel like the optional rival does in fact have bubble which I actually wonder if bubble will be fine if we can just defeat him with bubble or uh, even if he has bubble seems like something we should be able to do especially with our rock typing I think rock typing is one of those types where you have a lot of really really good early game matchups so it's probably best to exploit them for good XP while we still can plus I hit level 6 which you know is always helpful probably not necessarily for defense in fact probably not even for attack all that much since damage rounding threshold the next damage rounding threshold is 8. Oh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, the Gen 2 mod also does have an XP bar, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it is unfortunate that you you tried uh, Aerodactyl. Um, you know, Aerodactyl and Crystal might be cool. I have not really looked into its moveset in Crystal. I bet it's probably better. It's not like I can get any worse. Am I right? <laughs> um, okay, so we do have one accuracy drop. If you haven't noticed in the bottom left-hand corner by HP, there is no minus HP status condition. So that's where I stick accuracy drops. Unfortunately, I have not stuck accuracy improvements in that area. But... That almost never comes up. We are still going to be dealing with Scratch for quite some time, unfortunately. You know, I could have sworn that I'd probably be one-shotting these by now. I'm, they're probably not even worth battling at this point. Yeah, 
Yeah, who am I kidding? They're they're definitely not worth battling. And unfortunately, the cat is, of course, uh, leaving the camera area. All right, we do have level eight, which, you know, is most likely not going to do very well. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. I know I wanted to get to there at level 13, but it is always worth, you know, just testing since this is the first run, seeing what we're capable of doing. I have a feeling that it's probably going to be like a four shot on Onyx, so we will have to be careful of Bide. Hmm... Okay, the Onyx is faster, which is not great. Uh, oh, actually, it looks like it must have been a speed tie because we went second, or so we went first that time. No, it was definitely not a speed tie. Interesting, but you know what? Level eight, I'll take it. You know, I think we were also full HP, so I didn't even need to do that either. Oh, Pokeballs, ooh. Okay, you know what? We'll just have to we'll have to catch her. No, no, I'll go back. It's not very far. Now I'm curious if we'll be able to uh, defeat Wild Geodude. I imagine the answer is probably no, considering we three shot the uh, Geodude from Brock but you never know you know unfortunately we will not have access to Mega Punch which would have been nice to have access to I mean I understand if you look at it you're like where 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 is it gonna be sticking these uh these punching fists um, I would argue that punching with claws is just as effective. Um, we do have an antidote. And a bunch of potions. I think there's no reason to be stingy. We should probably just use them. Alright, we got our 13. Hey, Boss KO. Welcome to the stream. Uh, only in lurk mode for a while at work. Oh, you're at work? Uh, are... What time zone are you in to be working? I mean, right now is generally when Europeans are all asleep. And it's when uh, every American is generally out of work unless you have like an overnight shift. Looks like seven scratches left. We definitely want to hit that up. Oh, did you guys know? Okay, well, it looks like it's going to be a two-shot on Geodude, but I think it's going to be worth it, honestly. Uh, oh, who am I kidding? We now have Water Gun, so we don't need to use Absorb. East Coast? Oh, Night Shift. Okay, well, that makes that makes perfect sense. Hey game dev, welcome to the stream. Um, I saw your your team. Your team is very interesting for the uh, for the Van Man race. If you guys don't know, Van Man is hosting a race. The race is a very relatively straightforward race. Uh, it sounds a lot more difficult than it most likely is, but the race is just no items except for Pokeballs and Repels. Essentially. Oh, and and uh, evolution stones. Very fun race. Uh, it gets your creative juices flowing. The times are starting to get pretty competitive, though. As people are now posting times, and they're realizing that they have bad strategy. Alright, this should be pretty good XP. Oh, welcome Jimbo Whitfield. Thank you for joining in on today's stream. 
Okay, well, uh, that Raticate was definitely harder than I expected, but I don't know why I thought it wouldn't have Hyper Fang. I mean, to be fair, it's better than Super Fang. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, the, I always try and grab a nickname from the poll that I send out during the week. Um, I don't remember who's the one who suggested this name. But, always great to get uh, compliments on the name. Uh, welcome, Nathan Rita. Always glad to see you join in every stream. You always say hi. Oh, it was you. My bad. <laughs> Generally, um, the people who have pictures associated with their, uh, their usernames are a little bit easier to identify with. They're a little easier to remember. I don't remember how you assign them. I think you have to go to like your Google Plus account or something like that. And it could be anything you're interested in. All right, we don't need a great ball. Uh, we already got our cut user. I don't foresee us battling Blaine first. So, most likely, we're going to be just fine. We can probably grab the Lapras later for Surf and Strength. Alright, this is the one that I'm a little iffy on, and it's mostly because of Pidgeotto. I don't think the battle itself is going to be hard. I think the Sand Attacks are going to be hard to deal with. Already with three Sand four Sand Attacks. Okay, fantastic. Five Sand Attacks. Okay bit unfortunate not much I can do about that um, you know what I will go ahead and use this moment to set up all these hardens it looks like it's we're gonna be 900 uh, XP away from the next level so these badge boosts are most likely gonna stick around for a little while unfortunately it appears we're gonna miss every single scratch Wow that took a really long time and then an immediate hit Okay. Okay. Okay, we got one more to go. We have four more. Perfect. Okay, we did it. Um, we don't have enough PP to battle the next trainer, though. Or HP to deal with the next trainer. So let's go ahead and heal. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, I actually think I want to battle the Geodude Machop guy along with the three Geodude Machop guy. They're probably going to be really good XP at this point of the run. And anytime you're all, you face a Geodude, you know, it's always going to be real easy. In fact, I might just throw the Onyx guy in there and just because. Hmm. Now, the thing is, I do know that Misty's Starmie has 59 HP. It looks like there's a chance we'll be level 6, or sorry, level 20. So that means we can 3-shot her Starmie. That might be a, a strategy worth considering. It definitely appears we're going to get to 20. It's definitely worth trying on this first run. Uh, I'm just taking a look at the moveset here in the top left-hand corner. Uh, it appears that we can learn Seismic Toss, which is good. Oh, I missed your comment there, C Duke. Uh, it is so much better because Wing Attack is 60 in Gen 2, and you get a 12.5% bonus from the first gym. Ancient Power is also pretty good, 60 power, uh, and it can also learn... You're kidding. Aerodactyl can learn Earthquake in Gen 2? Wow, that's really good. Oh, that was a crit. I was going to be like, there's no way I could have done that much damage to a Machop. 
Well, I guess they did they did a lot better for Aerodactyl. Does it allow Rock Slide via level up or anything like that? A rock move, possibly, in any sort of way? Because it seems it's very devoid of rock moves in Gen 2. Or 1. I did a whole video on how well it would do if it learned a rock move. Okay, I should probably be holding on to these scratches for the Oddish matchup. So I think we're probably just going to rely on Water Gun from here on out. Until we get to the Oddishes, of course. Probably want to heal up there. Alright, we're going to grab Seismic Toss. Um, not sure what I'm going to teach it over, honestly. I know I plan on getting rid of Harden at some point in the run, but I don't know when that point of the run is going to be. I might possibly get rid of Absorb. Hey, Ancient Power is still pretty good. Alright, good. As long as we get no sand attack, should be good. Perfect. Alright. Level 22 is probably a really good level. I think it's definitely worth a shot at Misty. 23 would have been really nice for damage rounding, but, you know, I'll take 22. Alright, couldn't find the escape rope there. Alright. I believe most likely I'm going to end up using Body Slam. But, you know, if by some miracle I can get through past Misty with just Scratch, I think it's definitely worth a shot. Alright, um, I think Absorb has outlived its usefulness. I'm going to go ahead and teach Seismic Toss now. I just do not see myself using Absorb. In theory, I probably could have considered teaching over Water Gun because I'm about to get Bubble Beam. But, I mean, I'm going to teach over Water Gun with Bubble Beam anyways. Uh, oh, it's going to be a two-shot on the Star U. With X defend, it's a freebie. A crit bubble beam did that much damage. That that looks good. Okay. You know what? That's hopeful. That's hopeful. It means if she doesn't get a crit bubble beam, we should be fine. If she uses some sort of like X defend or water gun, you know, we'll be fine. Okay. A regular bubble beam, an X defend, and a regular bubble beam. That is almost as bad as it could have gone, and we won. So you know what? We won't need Body Slam. That just worked out. Alright, so when we eventually make it to the SSN here, we're obviously going to grab Body Slam for Scratch. Um, the question is, should I grab Rest? Because there is a trainer... That has, uh, I believe, Goldeen or Staryu or possibly both in front of that guy with rest. And water is not our best matchup. All right. Uh, I ran mine with Hidden Power, Rock. Uh, wing Attack, Earthquake, Return. I honestly could have went without a reset, but I had horrible luck early on. Well, that's a really good moveset. And anytime you can beat uh, Red with using without having to use the Return, Rest, Sleep, Talk, and uh, Curse Strat is always a good win in my book. For those of you who don't know, that four move combo that basically every single Pokemon in Generation 2 can learn, it will pretty much always win with whatever whatever matchup you put it against. Oops. 
Now, of course, there's obviously, uh, there are obviously times where that matchup will not work, but generally it's for like the absolute worst of the worst, you know, like, like a spinner rack or something like that. All right. I think now with body slam, I can grab rest, but first let's grab that max potion. I don't necessarily think I'll need it, but let's go ahead and grab it anyways. Tentacool with no water moves. That's a good sign. And star you with water gun. You know, I think that worked out. We still have 13 body slams to spare. We have the rival. We've got our we've got our badge boost thanks to Brock. I think everything is coming up pretty well. In theory, I would probably want to use water gun. In actuality, I, I want to use body slam. Um, if you haven't noticed, in the bottom left-hand corner, we have 30 more attack than we have special. So even though the power was 40 better power, I think going with Body Slam was probably still the better bet. Okay, I do want to make sure that I still have enough Body Slams going into... Oh, well, we got a crit. That's perfect. We got seven body slams for three Pokemon on Surge. I think this is going to go well. All right, now that we got Cut, we can go ahead and teach Cut to Paris. We can teach Dig to Paris. And we can go ahead and teach Bubble Beam. Probably should have taught Bubble Beam the moment I got it. But, you know, there weren't any good matchups anyways. Technically, probably could have considered using it on the Growl of Ponyta guy. Alright. I generally forget to heal in front of him. Today, I don't think I actually need to heal at all. Kind of sucks though. We have a, a water or sorry, electric weakness. Ooh. No, I didn't change the uh, the color scheme. Uh, it is a what do you call it? Uh, an I IPS file that makes the game Gen Two graphics, but still Gen One in every single way. Oh, or, you know, we could just get a crit and that'll work out too. Sorry, I took a second there to bring up my game hook. Oops. Realized I haven't had game hook open this whole time, and we're starting to get there in the bag area. Get a little full in the bag. Uh, do you still want to back... Oh, sure. If you're home, absolutely. Uh, let me go ahead and pause the timer here while I start a call. All right. I have now officially shared screens with speed. Put on a headset. Turn my speakers off so I don't hear the music. Hear me good? Yep, and I hear you, and I'm fairly confident the stream heard you because I saw the little board thing move to the right. Ah. All right. And Most of your screen sharing, I guess I don't. I'll just keep your stream up for stream up for the view. All right. And I almost forgot the repels. In all of that commotion. So, I so was are you going to be doing two playthroughs? I absolutely will be. And I'm learning a lot. And they're all good things that I'm learning. Because apparently I can absolutely beat Misty without Body Slam. Which I didn't think I could do. What was your plan for Misty then without Body Slam? 
uh, it was test moves and fingers crossed it works. And then I came up with a strategy as I was playing and I looked at my move set, realized, hey, I can learn seismic toss. And you know what? I realized, hey, um, Misty, I know for a fact, thanks to Gamehook, that Misty typically has 59 HP on her Starmie. So I can three shot it and she likes to use X defend. So I figured if she uses an X defend and maybe she doesn't crit, there was a good chance of winning. Game dev three people would be would be a a crowd like difficult to keep up with. You saw how how much less I talked when we did the uh, the stream with Jim Leader Matt. It was still a fun stream though. I wish we could do it again. Oh, definitely. Surprisingly though, my stream did not do very well. But that might be because if um, if I have the same viewers that he has. They probably chose him. Uh. We all, you and me, both have uh, some of the same viewers. I think generally, when you, when we're both streaming, John Calibro prefers you. But when I'm streaming by myself, John Calibro likes to hang out. Um, when you're streaming by yourself, John Calibro likes to hang out. So you know, I'm cool with it. Online bully been in your streams recently. He has not. Unfortunately, I have not heard from him, which is probably a very bad sign considering he said he planned on keeping up with the streams um, once he gets his internet back. Um, I can only assume that he couldn't afford to get his internet back. So, my heart goes out to Online Bully. He's uh, going through a rough patch. Yeah, I completely understand that. I mean, I haven't had to deal with no internet, but for most of my life, the internet that we had in our house growing up, it was just so absolutely bad that we had no choice because we lived in the middle of uh, middle of nowhere. So a lot of things I wanted to do, I really couldn't do until we uh, got a different plan like a couple months ago. Yeah, I know the feeling. Um, when I first, first started using internet, this is going to sound stupid. Uh, it was dial-up. Yeah, know, I remember my older siblings used uh, dial-up, but I don't ever remember seeing them use it. It's the one, like, there, there, you know, there's a running meme out there about dial-up, and it's like... Yeah, that... No, that's real. That's real. That, that absolutely that, happened. Yeah. That noise is like... Everyone knows that noise. It's like impossible to replicate it with your voice. It's impossible. Oh, definitely impossible. But always fun to try. Yeah. Oh, ethers are worth zero dollars? Interesting. Yeah, they really do not want you uh, selling those things, but I don't know why they didn't just do what they do with the bike and just say, oh, we can't buy those. Like, why sell, sell it for zero dollars? I don't think I'm going to use Mimic, but first run's always good just to try and consider grabbing it. Did you also see game devs messages in the chat? Speed gets priority. Well, I mean, you can get priority too if uh, you've been, we, if you've worked together for like the last six months trying to grow on YouTube and get us both monetized and do all that sorts of stuff. Yeah, if you do all that, then maybe you'll get some priority. All right, um, I think I'm definitely going to be holding on to Ice Beam. I don't know if I will be using it, but it's definitely worth holding on to. All right. My uh, one question is, why are you holding on to Seismic Toss? Just for now. I plan on teaching over it. I wasn't sure who to watch when y'all did the stream. I saw it announced by Gym Leader Matt, so I watched his stream. I really liked all of y'all though watching early gen runs is literally my hobby yeah the whole thing was a lot of fun i understand why you watch matt he's the much bigger channel i agree yeah 
I am doing this in the wrong order. Why in the world would I consider battling Erica first? This was a stupid, stupid decision. I have a four times you probably because to, we want to, to grass moves. No, I was just in the area, which is a very bad excuse. Can Kabutops learn Swords Dance? It sure can. Yeah, I think maybe you should have came back with Swords Dance. I'm gonna give her one try just because I'm here, but this, you know, um, on a first run attempt, it's it's not the worst to try and go for like the crazy stuff, because if you do succeed, like that. The misty thing, maybe it's worth it. Okay, one shot. All right, well, that's uh, not coming back there. Know what you were expecting. Okay, well, you know, I'm used to walking out after a win. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it might be worth fighting all of Erica's trainers before you leave? No, I think uh, there is a lot better training. Um, I typically only like to do Erica's trainers when I have a move that's actually worth it. Uh, so a bug move like leech life, you can four times effectively damage every single trainer in her whole gym. Um, and then uh, pin missile. But if you have those two moves, it's definitely worth considering doing all of her gym trainers because it takes <coughs> absolutely no time. Uh, remember when you had your pull up? It was Kabutops, Omastar, and Rhydon. Uh, you told me that your theme for the pull was it was all rock types, but when I brought up the theme of the pull to you, my original idea was that it was a theme of all surf users because of the Rhydon. You straight up laughed at me. I, for some reason, was thinking this was the randomizer, and I have, uh. I have. I don't remember why I'm in. Oh, the PP up. I wanted to grab the PP up and the, uh. Rare candy. And I guess technically the nugget, but I don't care about the nugget. I'm not going yeah. back. I don't know, unless you want double edge. No. No thanks. I should have considered grabbing Swords Dance real quick right there. It's only two battles with uh, trainers with their Pokemon in the low level 30s. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm going to have to do this with either Bubble Beam or Seismic Toss after Rival 4. Yeah. You know, something I've realized, I've been thinking of how, like, our normal streams, when it's just us by ourselves doing, like, a solo run or whatever, they would get, like, twice as many views as the randomizers do. I think that's maybe because, like, since we share a lot of regular viewers, they're often split on, like, who to watch. So they just choose one, and they oftentimes don't watch the other one. So I've been trying to think of ways to, like, uh... So, like, e no matter whose stream you're watching, you can still see both of the action. Although I'm not sure how I would implement that. Well, I know how to do it on Twitch. I even know what the program is called. Um, on Twitch, there is a program... Uh, called Squad Stream, where it just pulls up all the streams conveniently for you. Well, I remember watching a while ago uh, Scott's uh, Ghastly stream with Gym Leader Matt. What Scott did, like in the bottom right corner, he had like a window capture of a Matt stream, so you can see like what Matt was doing when Scott played his game. I was thinking maybe we could do something like that, but I don't know where that would fit in your overlay. Oh, or it'd mine. be easy. I'd just get rid of the cat cam. No, not the cat. The cat isn't even in the cat cam right now. It's so unreliable. <laughs> Although, I have a feeling if I were to bring, bring that up to a vote, the cat would win. <laughs> yeah, people like, uh, people like cats. Hmm. I feel like I should be further in the game at 31 minutes. Well, you did uh, attempt to fight Erica. That doesn't cost me more than like a minute and a half. Yeah, probably not. I mean, you only gave it one attempt. You didn't pull an Aerodactyl. Or, right. I guess the, I, or I guess a smaller version of Aerodactyl, which was a uh, pulling a Furret. 
Oh no, I, I missed out on learning Absorb. Whatever shall I do? You're screwed, man. Start over. All right. Um, I remember now what I'm doing with Seismic Toss. I'm teaching over it with uh, Slash. And then I'm going to teach over Bubble Beam with Surf. And that's going to pretty much be my final moveset once I pick up Swords Dance. You're having Slash, Body Slam, and Swords Dance? Yes. Think about, <clears throat> think about what else I have at my disposal. I, have... I guess you can teach uh, Rock Slide. The fossils get rock moves, right? No. No, they do not. Yeah, that'd be... Uh, that's quite sad. I remember uh, watching one of Scott's runs. He had his own theory on why the fossils didn't learn rock moves. They're not actually rock types, even like back in the dinosaur days. They just have the rock type because they were at one point a fossil, but... That still doesn't justify it, because they got rock moves later. Oops. So you said you want your final move set to be uh, Sword Stance, Body Slam, Slash, and uh, Surf? Well, that's what I want to try. I don't don't know if that will actually end up being what I, I use. I mean, you're ignoring uh, some good choices like uh, Ice Beam and uh, Submission. I'm holding on to Ice Beam. Um, I refuse to acknowledge Submission's existence. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that about, just doesn't what about, uh What about Skull Bash? You know, I have uh, definitely considered it because of its hard head, but I think I might pass. Okay, uh, I've got a move that you can't resist. Rage. I don't know where to get it. If you did know, you still wouldn't get it. Right, but maybe maybe I would consider... Consider, uh... Going up to... Oh, oops. oops. Alright, well, I, I gotta... Know why, I don't know why, but the Gen 2 uh, color palette, the overworld looks kind of weird. Um, yeah, I, I can't tell you why. It doesn't make any sense to me either. No. What am I doing? Where's my... Oh, there they are. For a second, I was like, I could have sworn I bought the Super Repels. They did exist. Okay, well. You know, now I have Egg Bash and Skull Bomb. Every run needs those moves. Did you just say Egg Bash and Skull Bomb? Yes, exactly. You want to double check that? No, no, I'm pretty sure I said it right. Hey, Edmundo, welcome to the stream. Okay. Yeah, pokey hands. All right. Um, definitely should have considered grabbing sword stance by now because now i'm gonna have to just kind of win against koga which shouldn't be hard but you know happens Oof, i'm a little disappointed i can't one shot these yeah yeah during our whenever i do my uh that no item run i actually use this trainer right here to see if my duck trio has a good attack if it has bad attack it can't one hit the drowsy that's how i'm able to tell oh cool uh i got rid of the uh egg bash I got yeah i mean yeah dope. yeah i'm not surprised he said egg bash and skull bomb i remember i was watching his uh polyrath stream the last uh red and blue solo run stream he did he said that uh polyrath is able to get a bunch of great fighting moves like body slam and earthquake <laughs> <laughs> that was on purpose <laughs> you literally said that on purpose <laughs> I love saying the wrong moves because it gets a rise out of people because they either they don't know if I if I'm being serious or they uh, don't know well, if I'm just you being are funny. Serious. That's the best part. You guys don't know if I'm just stupid or if I'm being funny. And I think it's a good equilibrium. I don't know. I really don't like living by that asset like I always just think, okay, is this guy serious or is he just playing stupid? 
I'm tired of guessing. I'm, I'm throwing this battle so hard. Okay, maybe you're just being stupid. Ex okay, well, there's no way I'd survive an explosion. You know, I tried. Uh, unfortunately, the poison was uh, not on my side. Um, my move choices were not on my side. It, it happens, you know. Uh, you learn from doing that first run that uh, wheezing's or sorry, coughing's defense is pretty actually good. So uh, you you then switch to surf, and you know. Steve, I always just assume you are stupid. I mean, hey, come on. At least he's not pulling a speed. Quite frankly, I assume everybody is stupid until proven otherwise, and that's how I go through life. The it's the best way to go through life. Once somebody proves that they're smart, they're great people to talk to. Yeah. But boy, there are a lot of stupids out there. Alright, can't use that. Um, let's go ahead and fly to Saffron. You know, we're probably now over-leveled to be grabbing... Uh, I think it's the seventh floor? Maybe nine? You know? I'm gonna go ahead and say I knew that guy had a Q-bone. And I knew he'd be great training. Just, Death. uh, go with that. Yep, yep, we'll go with that. Um, we'll also forget the fact that I apparently have no, no, uh, space in my inventory and that I don't have the card key. So we're gonna we're gonna forget all of that stuff. All right. Well, we obviously can't get rid of egg bomb. We need that. I think you mean eggs, egg bash. It could be either one of them. They're both so good. All right. Fifth floor. And you know, sometimes you have to set a really bad time on run one, so that way you, when you do run two, you look really good. That's the main strategy. Yeah. So that way you can actually make yourself look smart, even though we all know what you really are. I learned that in high school, actually. Um, I don't know if you had that this thing called the pacer test in high school. Never heard of it. Okay, well, it's a physical fitness thing where you run back and forth, back and forth, over and over and over again, uh, progressively getting faster and faster until you essentially cannot make it to the other side of the gym. Well, um, technically the goal was obviously to get as high, you know, around as possible. Um, it wasn't until about mid-high school that people told me, hey, um, you get graded on this shit. So maybe you set a really bad score the first time around, and then you set a really good score the second time around, so it looks like you had improvement. So you do that with all of them, you know, sit-ups, push-ups. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, unless it turns out there's a plot twist where that was your uh, that was your one chance for a final semester grade or something. At the beginning. Of the semester? That seems unlikely. No, I meant the... I, I, did I say that? I meant the end. Okay. Well, um, I don't have Slash. I anticipated having Slash. So, uh, this is one is going to go very weird. On the bright side, Whirlwind doesn't work. So, you know, I can set up Swords Dances pretty freely. Oh, I love that. Well, somewhat, well, somewhat freely. I saw my my <laughs> attack go up from 499 to 513. I'm like, yep, that should happen in one level up. <laughs> uh, it's. Well, I mean, it's. Hmm. I guess, yeah, it's because you used the swords dances. It wasn't a badge boost glitch. I know. It, it's just funny because you know that's a lot for a level up. Yeah. All right, and now, uh, now I have the decision to make each time. I like slash. to slash or not to slash. Exactly, such a good question. 
Does uh, Kabutops' uh, speed guarantee a crit? <laughs> Does Kabutops' speed guarantee it? It's got like 80 speed, so yes, that is higher than 64. Because I could have swore on the Q-Bone, you used Slash, it did not crit. Uh, I use Surf. Oh, it was one of the Pokemon back there. Boy, King is gone. I've got your stream up. I'm going to see if I can rewind and see what that was. It was Surf. You could believe me. I wouldn't lie to you. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. It was Surf. You sur you slashed the drowsy. I just mixed up the the tax boxes. Now, the big question here is, can I beat Sabrina? <gasps> oh no. Boy, when you haven't played a Gen One run, you really need to, to like remember a lot of things. Why did I think there was a door here? That'd be too easy. Why are you in Silphco? No reason. Oh. Chris. Yeah. It was a painful, painful mistake. I mean, I don't know why you want it. It's, uh, level 15. It can't help you with anything. You know how many runs I've done, and I never, ever thought about what level the Lapras was? A lot, apparently, because when you made your original route for the itemless race, your plan was to train Lapras because you thought it was level 30. It should be level 30. Everything else around there is level 30. The, uh, Hitmon, uh, the Hitmons are both level 30. Oh, you know, it probably would have been real smart to set up there. Wow, Venomoth. Really? Paralyzed? Are you serious? Oh, thank God I got that critical hit. What else would I have done if I hadn't? I just looked it up in the, uh... Kanto remakes, uh, the Lapras is also level 15, but something I know is not the same. You know how in Red and Blue the fossils are, I think, level 30? Yes. Uh, in, uh, the remakes, they're all the way at level 5. So I can Generally... definitely tell you, as a kid, whenever I've, I've played, uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green many, many times, I never used the fossils because I never wanted to train them. Generally, when people say all the way, they don't talk about a decrease. <laughs> when you said all the way, I was thinking, oh, you mean like 50? I wish. You know, I actually have a theory about Blaine. Uh, do you think in a normal, like, non-solo playthrough with, like, a random starter, do you think Blaine would be harder if he wasn't on an island surrounded by water that you need surf to get to? Um... Because what if you didn't have access to surf yet and you had to fight a fire trainer? Well, the thing is, they really like holding your hand in these games, so... I want to say that was always going to be the plan. I don't imagine uh, Gen 1, like, holding your hand. I don't know. I think Gen 1 holds your hand a lot. They, why like, else, never tell else, you where to go. Why else would they co code in the ability to, to boost your stats with Harden? All of your stats. They didn't do that on purpose. No, they absolutely did on purpose. Otherwise, they'd just be idiots. By the way, if you're wondering why, uh, I'm definitely going to be doing this training on the second go around, but I now am convinced that I want to consider doing the league as low a level as possible to see just how far I can make it. I'm fairly confident I will get tripped up at Lance. Tripped up very badly. What makes you think Lance is going to be an issue? Because I'm fairly confident I am going to need a critical hit body slam just to start the run, followed by 
uh, like a hydro pump miss. Seems pretty unlikely. Yeah, kinda. And I, I mean, think I his guess... good AI is just gonna spam hydro pump. I mean, I guess technically, um, after the first hydro pump miss, the bo the first or the second body slam can crit. Oh right. Let me guess. You forgot Erica. You know, I technically didn't forget her. I just lost. You just pulled a J Rose. <sighs> I did. I did. Our original. But J Rose forgets him, or forgets her to begin with. I forgot. I skipped her and came well i tried her and then came back i think there's a difference uh. i did it i won no erica just uh felt really threatened by you yeah my my pokemon lowered its head like it was gonna use skull bash but then didn't Because we don't teach Skull Bash here on the channel. Not even when it's... <laughs> when you have the choice between Skull Bash and Payday. We'll take Payday every time. Alright. Are you serious? Is Slash overrated? It honestly is, yeah. Or am I underleveled? Uh, probably both. Maybe instead of using calcium, or buying calcium in the middle of the run, I should have considered buying protein, because every I think every every little bit to my attack stat probably matters a lot. Yeah, maybe. Boy, he he does realize he is he's got the level advantage on me, right? Uh, maybe he's just not that good of a criminal. That's all right. You know what's interesting? If uh, if it's pretty obvious that uh, Giovanni is uh the leader of Team Rocket and he has his own gym, do you think all the gym trainers are members of Team Rocket? No, I don't think so. Um, in real business, you can have your, your fingers in a lot of different businesses and not know anybody. Hey, look, Steve, I got your chat active again. I haven't seen any ghosts, so it can't be a ghost town. Oh, right. You know, maybe maybe I use Slash there to, to conserve my Body Slam PP. That's, that's definitely what I did. Uh, yeah, conserve your 20 body slams. Hey. Why didn't you learn Leer? You know, uh, Leer may be a little too powerful. You'll give the opponent badge boost. I don't think it works like that, but boy, no, imagine it if it did. Imagine if, uh, oh yeah, then, like... Good AI would be really bad, like, Lance would just be badge boosting his moves with barrier. So you're saying I can pick up the item. Aha. Uh -huh. Man, I'm surprised I'm surprised you managed to do that without getting on the water. Oh getting out of the water. See, everyone keeps thinking that moving left and right is so hard without mo without like actually taking steps. I find it's it really hard on four times speed. I find it not that difficult at all to to precisely um probably like because you're using a space. keyboard. Yeah, exactly, keyboard. My overall movement is relatively mediocre, but boy, when I need to only move one space like right here, not hard at all. That spot right there is the only spot in the game Van Man will slow down his thing to one time speed. In well, order... he also plays on keyboard too. Right, but he'll he'll manually change his speed to one time speed so he doesn't screw up that button click. Should learn how to practice that part and maybe practice learning the bike. 
I'm I'm fairly confident he's gonna die on the hill that the bike is worse. He will not change his mind. He is just gonna be stubborn on that one. All right, I I passed up on picking the oh, picking up the OP move right there. For those of you who don't know hey, that hey, team hey, right hey, there hey, is it's... just too good. I can't not just use it. Come on, that move is really good and competitive. Yeah, you're right. It's a shame that only a handful of Pokemon can learn it. They just happen to be ball shaped too. Oh crap. I almost forgot. I do this every single run. Crap, don't have room. Mm. Why do I have the Poke Doll? Oh, right. <laughs> You're literally there to get Mimic. Maybe why, I did that. Why, why else do you need the Poke Doll? Maybe I was acting dumb on purpose. Uh, How long uh, of a leash do you guys have for, for acting stupid? <laughs> okay. Um, I only have 10 rare candies for some reason, so I guess I must have missed one. I don't remember where it is, though. All right, so we're going to start with Slash. All right, so now that it's damaged, we then use Sword Stance twice. It wakes up, Slash again, uses Rest, and now we're fully set up and we win. Or we get a crit. Boy, Cloister, Cloister, stop, please. Okay, good, good. I'm fairly confident I should outspeed everything. And Lapras is not too tanky. Perfect. So that matchup is basically guaranteed. There's absolutely nothing that can go wrong. Alright, pretty much the same thing here. We don't even need the Swords Dances. But, you know, we're going to go ahead and pull them anyways, just to use them to hit Mons and the Machamp. You know, just in case. Uh, Leer isn't as powerful as Skull Bomb or Clefairy's Deadly Double Punch. These are moves I have invented and are completely legit moves. Do not make fun of them. I can do, I can do what I want. Okay, this match is the one that's scary. Uh, also Lance. You really? You survived, Golbat? I, I'm heavily disappointed in you. Alright. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so, yes. That is unfortunate... Um, you know, I'm not sure there is anything else we can do. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what we have available to us. Um. Maybe, we... uh, Mimic Nightshade? Well, unfortunately, Bide is not available to us anymore. That would have been a big boost, as you all know, from, uh, the... Uh, the Scyther run. Bide. Very, very good move. I think I could possibly get this Gengar down to a two-shot. This is my last attempt at level 49. Alright. Mm. So, uh, turns out this is the point of contention. This is the point we will use our rare candies on the next run. Unfortunately, we cannot learn Hydro Pump, but you know, it is what it is. All right, level 59. You know, those run those old old runs of mine, uh I had noticed that I beat the game with B-Drill and Butterfree at level 59, 
Um, I don't think I've finished with a Pokemon that low of a level in a really long time. I mean, with those, you actually routed your runs out. Yes. Um, so... I probably should have just decided to go with a higher amount of training, and that probably would have made the difference in those runs. Oof. Uh, so, apparently, after doing all of those rare candies, the Gengar's still not a three-shot. Or sorry, still not a two shot. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and set up here on the Arbok just for some. Okay. You forgot it had glare. You know, I think it's worth the risk. I wasn't gonna outspeed anyways. Oh well, actually, I was gonna outspeed, but you know what? This was strategy. Now I can't fall asleep. Well, it uh went to sleep. You just gotta use the center to wake it back up. Yeah. All right. Um, unfortunately, there's just nothing I can do. I can try and set up on the gold bat. How dare you, Super Potion? All right, that was. Let's see if I can good. think of anything. All right, you use haze. All right, I confuse myself. I hit myself. All right, we're at a good start. Ah, more yep. than half. That's good. That's good. One bad boost is not bad. Okay, all right, we're back to I zero. I just realized, uh, why don't you have Ice Beam taught yet, or Blizzard? Uh, you know, I'm holding on to them for a rainy day. Uh, this seems like a rainy day to me. That was a good joke, wasn't it? It would have uh, been a great no. joke for Gen 2. Maybe. All right, so, um, yes. So the strat there is going to be... Use all my rare candies set up at least one time, so that way I have the damage on my side. Therefore, I will be able to two-shot the Haunter, and if I set up enough, which most likely I will not... Uh, Hydro Pump... Oh, Hydro Pump does less than half? Okay, this isn't going to be nearly as bad as I thought. I'm still going to lose this one, but um, the next attempt will go a lot better. Why are you spamming agility? You know, I'm it not should also go for Gap yeah, Dragon Rage. There it is. You know, I had I had to, to know. So I guess can I two shot it with Slash? I can. You know, unfortunately, Wah. we're back in the exact same situation we were just at before, and you know, we're probably gonna lose the exact Wah. same way. But the important thing is now we know we can two shot the dragon up, or uh, so, the Gyarados. No, that's totally a uh, Garrod, a uh, Dragonite. Now you got me doing it. Okay, you know once I stop being stupid, then then the run will begin. So we'll be here a while. Honestly, I'm leaving a lot of room for improvement on the second run. I think there's going to be so much that's going to be improved. Do you think on the uh, second run you'll find a spot to put in Ice Beam if you don't end up needing it? Um, I think I have just now proven that I 100% want Slash. So why even bother with the Swords Dance Body Slam thing? Well, to get past the, the hardest one, the uh, Gyarados. Uh, you use Slash on the Gyarados. Exactly, but you're telling me not to not to have Slash, so I need Slash. No, I would... Oh, okay. That's right. Don't you dare me... Don't you dare me or move me. No. Your move is just such a troll move. Okay, you're a little too powerful for my liking. <laughs> what are you worried think... about? Using a wing attack? I don't, I don't think I can risk it. 
<laughs> Wait, that was dumb. I should have used Body Slam. You sh no, no, no. You should use Surf on the Executor. You survived. All right. Okay, 102 for the first run. That is not awful. It is definitely worse than my first run of Polyrath, but I think I made a lot more mistakes than the Polyrath run. Did a lot more stupid stuff, yeah. Okay, um, but we have learned a lot of things. Misty, doable early. Um, that is about it. So maybe in the second run, don't waste time with Ice Beam? Uh, yes, don't waste... I don't even... Don't waste time getting Ice Beam. Don't waste time getting Blizzard. Don't waste time getting Mimic. Um, what about Seismic Toss? Seismic Toss is 100% worth it. That's how we beat Misty. Oh. Uh, yeah. Can't just use Absorb? She does a lot of damage, bro. Just uh, hope for her to get Gen 1 misses. Seems to happen to me all the time. Hmm. You know, I just don't think I'm that good. Alright. So. Let's go ahead. Um, I think moral of the story is we can go... We can do a little bit of extra training. Alright. So Pokemon ROMs. Boot tops. Refresh the stream. Bring up the game. Start her up. Don't ask me about that. Okay. All right. Anybody want to nickname our new Kabutops? What was the first one? The first one was Sickle. Uh, Cuddles? Because you would obviously want to cuddle it, because of its uh, knives for hands. You know, um, you just made me think of a, a name, a better name, Edward. Does anybody get the reference? Uh, no. It is not before your time, right? I'm not that old. What movie is it from? Uh, I want to say it has something to do with the word Christmas and Nightmare. The Nightmare Before Christmas? Yes. I think I've seen that movie once. I didn't, I'm not really a fan of claymation movies. Right, but, um, I'm, oh no, no, there's a different movie. Edward Scissorhands is what I was thinking of. Oh. I don't know why that one came up to came up in mind though. I wonder if they've got a scissor handed character. Oh well, who cares? Okay. Um anybody got a better name than Tomato Slicer and Cuddles? <laughs> tomato Slicer. Uh Well when I see the word slicer, all oh, I can think I've is got tomato. A, hold on, I've got a good idea you should try for this one. I'm going to ask a chat GPT for a nickname and see what it gives me. Uh, you got to be very specific. You have to ask it. Give me a name for the Pokemon Kabutops that has cultural relevance to a movie. All right. Give me a nickname With for Kabutops. What was the rest of it you said? That has cultural relevance to a movie in Relevant under 10 characters. To a movie in under 10 characters. Kabu Rock. Kabu Rock. <laughs> okay, actually, technically, I think you could fit 10 characters. So actually, it would be under 11. <laughs> All right, and uh, I'll just uh, mm, copy this. Just good. a boo rock. <laughs> so, um, game game dev. I don't know if he came up with that name 
based on the reference that I'm thinking about, but do you know the reference Shredder? Uh, Chat GPT, I don't think that's under 11 characters. It recommended Kaboo Terminate. Uh, do you know what the reference Shredder is, too? This uh, one is here before your time. It's also before my time. Is that? Is it from uh, Friday the 13th? I don't know. I've never seen Friday the 13th. Oh. Hmm. Um, I'll give I'm you a hint. Uh, all the main characters have uh, n names based on astronomers. All right, I'm going to try a different one. Give me a... Okay, well, nickname Boss K.O. got it. It's Shredder, Shredder is from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I I had the uh, VHS tape to, to that movie when I was a kid. I had uh, um, both versions, the cartoon version and the movie version. Um, oh, okay. I, uh, I cartoon put in the... version way better. I put in ChatGPT uh, just a generic nickname for Kabutops. It recommends Blade Shell. Well, I guess technically that will fit, but uh, we're just going to go with Shredder. Yeah. If you guys don't get the um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference, just pretend the na the reference is to a paper shredder. <laughs> uh, I have seen, or well, I actually owned the live action movies, and I'm telling you, they uh, they the acting was to be desired. I have a feeling if you were to go back and rewatch those movies. You would probably cringe just a wee bit. Although, there, I did watch a really cool documentary about the guys that were in those suits. Uh, there was not a lot of room, and I heard they were like 100 degrees. Sounds like a fun time. Like, they weren't fitted into the suits very long. Like, they, they filmed most of the movie, like, in in you know the time that they were filming because uh it was very expensive to put on and off and whatnot okay anyways i think that's enough time to uh be messing around so let's go ahead and get started Sing around is more fun all right um i think this may be tradition if game dev is here the first rival will be speed the second one will be dev nobody will know if it's if it's for game dev or for some some guy like named devin plot twist game dev's name is devman okay uh i just realized something uh my html is not working there it is i realized oh, it boy. wasn't working when the game time up. didn't work All right. Sh red -der. Cheddar. All right, and start our battle. All right. Plot twist. My real name is not Devin. Wait, that was... That's not a plot twist. That's what I expected. I think it was a plot twist for me, because I was so invested in that conspiracy. <laughs> uh, in the mid-game, how do you think I should change up my strategy? Do you think I should consider battling... Uh, or see, Do you think I should try and risk getting Swords Dance like, really, really early? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there wasn't really many fights you needed Swords Dance for that early, but... I think maybe we should you should do for Erica. Maybe get Ice Beam and replace uh, Seismic Toss just for Erica. You know, it can help you out in Tower Two. I I still feel like that's not gonna one shot Erica's victory bell. Maybe just yeah, you're probably right. All right, so I think we want to try and get to level seven for the optional rival, because we were not doing a lot of damage to that Pidgey. Oh, yeah, you're right. The rival is using Squirtle, so technically uh, I am fighting the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. It just happens to be uh, watery. 
Well, I mean, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live in the sewers, so, I mean, there's water down there, not the kind you'd want to drink. Oh, darn, should have named the rival Splinter for oh, that no. reason. No, no, stop it, stop it. This is why I tell you, I believe Rival 1A is actually harder than Rival 2. Oh, not six sand attacks. And plus, you don't have the boulder badge. You can't even badge boost anything. Oh, that did nothing. Oh, you could do it. Okay, well, fuck that. You oh, suck. that that already wasted too much time. We can't. I never, almost never attempt that fight in vanilla unless I I have a super effective move against the Pidgey. I generally try and do that run if I have like an OP move. Uh, Scratch was not an OP move. No, I think it is. You are like, fighting like Leon if I have game. like a st like stomp for instance. If I have stomp or like you know a stab. Scratch or something like that. I'll definitely consider it. Have you done a regular solo run with Persian yet? I have not. I am looking forward to it though, because Persian is awesome. It's also it's really really good in Pokemon Stadium. Do you think I should fight the optional? Uh, or sorry, the junior trainer. I think you should. Yeah, he has really good experience in your early game. And his I mean, Diglett has dog water defense. I mean, what can they do to you? I've got Scratch. a bunch of potions, and I don't need my scratches. All right. Uh, I am a bit scared, though, of the sand attacking fiend that is about to come up. Oh, no. Oh, why are you using a oh why are you using a oh right the weaker special than defense yeah i yeah, think absorb would be better it's twice as effective see wasn't that worth it we are one level higher this time for brock despite not beating rival 1a i think maybe while you're doing that final run i might just get started on a no item run nah you don't need to do that Thank sure. God I did not Gen 1 miss. Imagine how bad that would have been if it was a two-turn bide with a Gen 1 miss. Ooh. I don't think bide can Gen 1 miss. No, if I Gen 1 missed an absorb. Ouch. Imagine. I can. You'd get one reset. It, it would just be an instant KO. Uh, cause I did like, I want to say almost 30 HP. Oh, relax. Bite is a normal type move, right? You resist that. All right. Um, so when we eventually get to rock tunnel, make sure not to use absorb. We're going to be using water gun. Need to remember that. You mean Mount Moon, right? No, the tunnel. Why would you still have Water Gun in Rock Tunnel when you're defeating Misty? That's a joke. I literally cannot tell if you're acting like an idiot or just joking. It's so much more fun this way. This is what makes you really good at those races. You're pretty good at deceiving me. It's just... It's just so fun. I'm not really that good at deceiving people. Stop poisoning me! <laughs> His Pokemon are not going to defeat me, but there's a chance this poison might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the poison doing two damage every turn. Why is it so low? I feel like it should be doing more. It's a 16th of your HP. What's a 16th of 43? Like, two? Oh. 16th. That's, uh... Yeah, poison have... was isn't that good. We've got mediocre HP, so it's, I guess, not that bad. Although, cannot get poison from here, because I do not have any more antidotes. I have gone through all of our antidotes. Don't you buy any antidotes in the mart? 
No. I get two free ones. Why would I? An emergency, maybe. What kind of emergency requires more than two antidotes? Two antidotes is the one is already the outlier. I mean, you do kind of you did kind of need an antidote. Wow. I cannot believe that. I could not defeat a level six Zubat. Crazy. Hey, Zubat is known for its excellent defense. <laughs> uh... I'll give you a comment in just a second. Gotta defeat this Geodude. Hopefully get past that. Get just a wee bit more attempt damage for future Zubats. Because remember, we gotta be level 22 for Misty. It's got to be 22. Why 22 specifically? That's not a damage rounding threshold. Um, I'll go ahead and let you mull that over. Why would I care about 22 damage? Sorry. Damn it. Why would I care about level 22 specifically? Outspeed? Mm, you know that is a that is a good thought. It's not right, but it is definitely an interesting thought. Oh, I first run of the day. Why would anybody one. want to be level twenty-two? Seismic toss. All right, now you're now you're thinking on the right train. Now why? Why would I want to be twenty-two for seismic toss? That seems so weird. How much HP does Starmie have? 59. Uh, is it for the Staryu? There we go. Ding, ding. Give this guy a medal. Star Staryu has 41 HP. Wait. So level 21 would work just fine, too. It might have had 43. You're, You're going to pretend Steve. it was... I actually don't know. I know it was somewhere around that. Just be like Scott and just memorize all the stats. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea how he does that. It's a magic I don't trick. know either. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and ignore Misty. Alright, Rival Man, 2. That's rude. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about Rival 2. Um... Technically, our stats say we should probably consider Scratch, but Water Gun is also pretty evenly good. Um, just keep using Gust and Quick Attack. That will make my life a lot easier. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're almost done, Abra. I know I know. it's it's boring to watch us do it, but don't worry. You just go ahead and teleport six times. I mean, teleport should have some sort of in-battle use, like, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, switch to another Pokemon? Would you believe that after all of those badge boosts, I literally doubled my attack. I was at, like, 103. Good for you. That's pretty nice. All right. Um, we're not going to have enough PP to get through the entire Nugget Bridge. So the absolute moment we feel threatened, we're going to go heal. Like right now. Um, sin attack. I, I feel threatened I ended already. Up, uh, in my no item run, I ended up beating the uh, first bug catcher with like one HP left because I forgot to heal for him. I entered the fight at like eight HP. Um, Not do a you good remember idea. if Mankey has submission? Uh, Not submission, in the fight? karate chop. Or, or uh, fighting. Yeah, it has, it has karate chop. I think it has low kick. low kick, too. Yeah, it does have low kick. Okay, so uh, that's our moment. We'll heal, we'll heal right before Mankey guy. He has a name, you know. No, he doesn't. His... He's got, it's like Junior Trainer, I think. Yeah, his name is Junior. And he's a trainer. That's his job profession. 
He's Junior the Trainer. That's like Clowny the Clown. <laughs> um, I already forgot. Um, when did I get a reset? Uh, Rival 1A. Right. Uh, you were wrong. Because I don't know why you kick. thought it was a. I don't know why you thought it was a good idea to fight him. He did not have low kick. You wait. You made me go back and heal for no reason. Oh, that might just be a yellow thing. Oh yeah, it is a yellow thing, because they gave Mankey a fighting move much earlier to make Brock easier. Same oh thing with God. Nidoran. That's a yellow thing. I remember in yellow, he has low kick. Okay. But he does have karate chop, right? Interesting little situation there. Um, I have just remembered that uh, Poison Sting exists. Sometimes it's easy to forget that. Well, uh, generally, I don't need to worry about it because I usually have two antidotes and I usually hold on to them the whole game. Today is not that simple. Okay, we are level 20. We need to get a level and a half on this route, which seems very, very likely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and scooch right by uh, Slowpoke guy. Um, nobody knows Slowpoke Guy exists, but I do. Um, there's no reason to ever battle Slowpoke Guy unless you have an electric move. And even then, I just know, um, that I just know him has as confusion. The, I just know uh, the Slowpoke youngster as like the guy you use for the Mew glitch. Oh. <laughs> um, there's also another youngster over here. Um, he has, I believe, a unique Pokemon of some sort. I just don't remember what it is. I want to say it is Cubone? On Route 25? I don't think so. If I you're talking remember. about the youngster, if you're talking about the youngster before the Oddish last, uh, yeah. I think he just has like a generic youngster type team, like Ekans, Rattata maybe, those I, things. I'm fairly confident I remember he's got something different. Well, I'm oh. pretty sure it's not Cubone. All right, how much damage did that do? Okay, that did way more than Seismic Toss. Okay, that's good. Um, I ended up not using any Ethers in the whole run, so we're not going to go ahead and pick up the useless Ether. I only like picking that up for runs that I absolutely expect to run into BP issues, but I don't. Huh, you say Ether. I actually say Ether. I don't I, know what's I, right. I switch back and forth. I is it one of those I, things where, like, it depends on where you're from, like, no, tomato, I generally, tomato? I generally switch back and forth. I usually, sometimes I say ether, sometimes I say ether. It's tomato, tomato, literally. Uh, kind of like uh, I switch back between route and root, depending on the context. No, that's just crazy. You shouldn't do that. Well, too bad. I can do what I want. I'm just messing with you. Maybe uh maybe I'm point three percent British. Maybe that's Don't where worry. it's coming from. There's only there's only one wrong oh, he is forty one. Bummer. Oh uh, so it was twenty one. So yeah, twenty one would be the minimum for seismic toss to be a two hit. Oh, how dare you crit bubble beam? My only weakness, crit, crit bubble beam. Can you survive a crit water gun? Yes, but crit bubble beam is my weakness. I can survive two regular bubble beams. X defend is is the difference maker in this run. Perfect. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I Gen 1 missed! Seismic Toss has 100 accuracy. I'm fairly confident. It does. Yeah, wait. You should know this. Look at your... Doesn't your overlay have accuracy on it? Do you see? Oh, no. Um, See, Scott and I were going to do that. Um, I was in the Kahoot... I was... I was talking with him when he when he thought about that. Um, at some point, he implemented it and didn't tell me. I actually had the power overlay before him. Did you know that? It's because he helped you do it. Yes, and uh, he hadn't fully completed making his overlay with it yet. So I'm sure he's had it made, he just didn't implement it yet. It wasn't in his videos. Uh, I had either one yeah, or two like... videos before him. 
his with... videos are like asynchronized. Like he could do a solo run with something and not release the video for five months. I have also noticed that. <sighs> Gotta be kidding me! This Getting grass. a lot of encounters. Three encounters in that grass? You're lucky to get one! You mean you're unlucky to get one. Alright, Bubble Beam, you, you better be worth it. You got double the power. I... all... no. I don't even want to say almost. I, I technically have a lot more than double. If you... whatever, you get my point. It's two and a half times the power of Scratch, so my special stat is not two and a half times lower than my attack stat, so it is better to use Bubble Beam. Some interesting math. No, that's just math. It's just regular-ass math. No, it's still interesting. Alright, I'm on Rival 2 now. No resets so far. Oh, you know, man. The Pidgeotto put me at, like, 10 HP. I just sold all of those items. Did not manage to uh, buy the repels. The one thing I came in there for. Oh my. Man, this rival was not nice to me. He just spammed quick attack. Like, almost every move was quick attack. Usually, that's a good thing. Yeah, not in this one. Like, he just used them way too many times. Oh, right. I don't need uh, rest. But, you know, I picked it up anyways. Honestly, rest is one of those moves that even though technically most of the time you don't need it, it's not bad to have. Yeah. Well, two sand attacks. That was a little scary. I just spammed A and assumed that uh, it was going to land on Kabutops. I knew for sure it would cheat over my first move, which was Scratch. Interesting math is where he fudges the numbers to balance the books. I don't do that. <laughs> he probably messes up numbers all the time at his job. Um, I'm, I am just, not I'm as, just kidding. I'm not as accurate as I once was. In my uh, youth... You know, three or four years ago. Three or four years ago. <laughs> In my youth, I never made mistakes. Um, that used to be my selling point. I'd, I'd go into job interviews and I, I would literally say, you could not possibly find a mistake with anything I did. Um, I make mistakes all the time now. And the, yeah, you'll say that in a job interview and the guy's like, oh, so you have a high ego. I know you say that is a bad thing, but um, in the real world, that's a good thing. Sadly, yeah. All right. I kind of had to do an emergency heal at the Cerulean Center because uh, one of the Nidoran poisoned me, but it was on a trainer I normally heal after anyway, so I don't really consider that a time waste. I'm fighting the Rocket Grunt at the Nugget Bridge sub-12 minutes. Oh, nice. I With one reset on the rival. The ri the first rival just was not nice to me. I absolutely trounce that Raichu. Yeah, take that Raichu. It was a baby. It was a big baby. Big baby. I was using Surge's words against him. Alright, let's make sure to pick up the bike. You know, I saw this uh, article from some gaming website on why Surge shouldn't, shouldn't be the gym leader, and I thought they were going to say his team was just terrible, but they based all their logic on like the anime where Surge basically just goes straight up overkill on a bunch of innocent children's Pokemon and like send them to the hospital, and then he would just straight up harass gym challengers. Right. I like calling them names and stuff, and he was right. being a bit questionable around Misty. You know, um... Unfortunately, I think that kind of stuff in the Pokemon world probably is fine. Yeah. 
Um, although, um, it seems like a lot of them like to throw their matches. I don't think Surge would ever throw a match. <laughs> you know, like Brock, Brock shouldn't have let the Sprinklers let him win. That should have been an instant, uh, you know. Can you imagine, though, if that logic, though, with Brock's gym was applied in the games, you use a rain dance and electric moves can hit ground types? Oh boy. There are so many so many things about animes that uh that that should never be applied to the game. Um uh, most notably Yu-Gi-Oh. Um they they nerfed a card that was like like a pretty big staple of the the game. Um they nerfed it like a they made it unplayable. And it should have been Really? Like, that it, bad? Oh, it <laughs> It, it's so nerfed that, like, it's... Uh, people probably don't even remember what it's called. I remember what it's called. Because I watched the anime way too many times. Uh, there's a card called Card of Sanctity. Um, both players draw until they have... Uh, it's either six or seven cards. Um, in, in the actual game, it's something like throw away your whole hand, draw two cards or something. It's... It's pretty bad. Um, actually, throw away your whole hand, draw two cards. Honestly, That's a terrible card. No, throw away your hand, draw two cards would actually be an improvement over whatever this thing had. Oh, really? Well, you got to remember, if you play that card you've and it's the last card in your hand, then technically you're drawing two cards. So that would actually be a preferable um, outcome to, to what the card actually did. Uh. But they made it awful. And you could probably Google it because if you Google Card of Sanctity, you'll come up with the real card and not the anime card. The nerfed one or the original one? No, I, mean, I don't think anybody remembers the, the anime one. Okay, are we going for, for early... Uh, early sword stance? Er, uh, there's no harm against it, you know. Unless you really don't need it for the early mid game fights, I, in which I, case just wait till rival five. I really want Swords Dance for uh what's it called? Um Koga. Then right. just go get it. And you know what? I will try your recommendation for Ice Beam. You know one fun fact about like uh sense or uh nerfing cards? They actually uh I guess they didn't nerf a card. They actually banned a couple of the old cards from the Gen 2 sets, all because of translation errors. It allowed the cards to be completely broken. That's kind of funny and sad. Yeah, but in Japan, like, the cards are allowed because they're not broken. Why do I feel like I should have more rare candies? Because you're bad? Yeah, probably. Alright, come on, Doug Trio, where are you? Alright, and you know I'm what? actually a got... couple minutes behind pace right now from all those resets. Go ahead and pick up these protein. Oh, we're gonna have to buy those super repels later, unfortunately. Ah, oh, darn it. It I switched to the Pidgey. And it just straight up turn one used a scratch. That's the level 31. Oh, dude. The Yu-Gi-Oh! anime had so many OP things. I agree. Um, also, the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, it added non-factor by 50 um, stats. So there's a card called there, uh, like something like Darkness Castle or whatever. It's got 1,930 defense. There's nothing special about it. Actually, in fact, it's kind of a bad card, but uh, it's just interesting. All right, so we're picking up the PP up. We're picking up the rare candy. Okay, I really hate relying on Dog Trio. Like, it's it's just such a pain to catch.
Wait, you don't even get Rain Dance in Gen 1. Yeah, there's no Rain Dance. Alright, um, you know, see, even though technically battling Erica here is probably futile, probably stupid, in fact, one of the things that I have going for me is I now have Fly this time, so if I do waste an attempt on Erica, I can get out of the gym and fly away. So it's not that bad. Oh, okay. What's our crit chance? Maybe, uh, Overlay. 15%. Uh, does it automatically calculate that? Or do you have to manually do the math and just put that in the overlay? Uh, it is auto-calculated. Oh. Thank you, Scott. Alright, um, according to 15%, I should get it one in how many tries? Um, about seven tries. So we'll give it seven resets. I'm going to be really pissed, though, if the crit does not kill it. All right, I'm actually going to look up... Uh, since I just gave up on that run, and I was only going to do one, I'm going to look for some banned Pokemon cards, see if, what good ones there are in here. Hmm. Oh, my God! Waste of time. Complete and utter waste of time. Oh, I'm so mad. Oh, Mega Drain did that much damage? Uh, feels bad. Alright, anyways. Now we're gonna go ahead... Oh, oh, hold on. Why, why uh, can I not enter self? What causes me to enter self? Or be able to enter self? Is it... Do I need the Poke Flute to be allowed to enter Sylph? Oh boy, we're entering uncharted territory, guys. Oh, here's one. Uh, one of the most popular reasons for a card being banned is because of fears that it may become too powerful. This is why cards from Lost Thunder, based on the popular unknown Pokemon, were banned. For these two banned unknown cards, the abilities Damage and Hand, which resulted in automatic wins if their conditions were met, were feared to be too easy to come by in the future. The abilities basically are, if there are a certain number of, uh, like one ability says, if there are 66 or more damage counters on your benched Pokemon, you can just use the ability and auto win the game. And the other one says, uh, if there are 35 cards or more in your hand, which is like half the deck, you just straight up win the game. That's not fun. Oh. Alright, let's see. It looks like they banned uh, the Hex Maniac from Ancient Origins because uh, the card... Basically, when you play the supporter card during your opponent's next turn, your op opponent cannot use any of your Pokemon's abilities. People just ban the card because they said it wasn't fun not being able to use abilities um i only know of the gen one abilities do they did they make yeah. it better in future well games? i know gen well gen the gen one gen two cards there were poke they were called uh pokey powers uh the modern cards that they're, they're mostly the same thing except i think a bill i know the old pokey powers like they wouldn't work if you were like poisoned or asleep or something like that but I think abilities just work as long as you're alive. So I think that's the difference. Mm. Let's see. Uh, oh, it looks like they banned a they banned a Mars Shadow card. Banned for ability that gives the opponent unfair hand disadvantage. Let's see. It's not just supporter cards that create a huge advantage for the player going first. Mars Shadow from Shining Legends also lets devastate outcomes for the player going second. Mars Shadow, when placed on the bench, can force an opponent to shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four new cards. This automatically results in the player going second to have a hand disadvantage at the start of the match. 
When combined with other cards, this strong mythical Pokemon also led to players going second to start their first turn with no cards in their hand. <laughs> That's brutal. Sure is. This run is having some brutally unfortunate luck. I, I got paralyzed and I have no way of healing the paralyze, so I had to go down two floors to get rid of it. Oh, here's one. Uh, in a in a Sun and Moon Unified Minds, they had a card called Blaine's Quiz Show. They uh they just straight up uh they banned the card. Let's see. Uh, it was banned from a World Championship for a unique reason. Blaine's Quiz Show has a very simple premise. The turn player sets a Pokemon face down. The opposing player has to guess an attack. If they guess correctly, they draw four cards. If they guess wrong, you draw four cards. But the problem is. How are you going to use this card if they don't speak the same language as you, and all the cards are in a different language, where the moves names are different? That is not what I expected you to say. Oh. Hmm. Please let me go in. Please let me go in. Please let me go in. Yes! Let's okay. see. Turns out, after you get the Pokey Flute, you can totally come by self. Alright, let's see. Bali, Belelba, and Bryson Man. Banned for milling and unfairly shrinking the opponent's bench. Belilba and Bryson Man is a tag team supporter card that works primarily to the Miss Magius that's intended to control the opponent. It primarily works as a milling card by discarding cards from the top of each player's deck. However, it can also shrink each player's bench if the individual who used this supporter card discarded three cards from their own hand. This is another oppressive means of controlling the opponent, and it works well in mill decks that often rely on control strategies. Consequentially, Belelba in Bryson Man was also banned in Standard. TCG would later release a replacement version as a promo card with different effects. Huh. So basically, you could play this card like very early in the game, and just straight up tell your opponent, guess what? Your bench is going to be cut in half. Uh huh. Yeah. Apparently, this list also has some cards that were just straight up uh, banned in the US or had their artwork changed. There's a card called Sabrina's Gengar in one of the old. Uh, the gym sets. I don't know if it was Gym Heroes or Gym Challenge, but the artwork was actually changed because in the Japanese version, the Gengar was standing right in front of a graveyard. I see no issues. I mean, it's, I mean, it's thematic. It makes sense. All right. Well, can I beat Rival 5 this early? I want to say see. probably not. But... Okay, okay. This listing here is a uh, straight up stupid. Uh, you know that uh that ancient Mew card? No. Oh, it's like a it's like a card. It's all covered in like hieroglyphics and stuff. It looks really weird. It straight up says, uh, you want to know why this card's banned? It's because it's not written in English. Like it's written in hieroglyphics. No one knows what it means. Makes sense. Man, this list... Okay, uh, let's see. Alright, here's one. Here's one card I know. It's a... It's a Sneasel card from, uh... I think it was, uh, Neo Genesis, the first Gen 2 card set. Uh, this... This Sneasel introduced in Neo Genesis set one of the most infamous bans by Wizard of the Coast because of how disruptive the card has become to the meta, thanks to its beat-up attack. The card was both devastating and rampant because of its ability to do an average of 80 damage and a maximum of 140 damage per turn as early as the second turn. And this was back when, like, the card with the highest HP was pretty much Chansey with 120. So, like, under the right circumstances, Sneasel could just one-shot anything in the game. Funny thing is, because in the game, Sneasel's just so bad. Unfortunately, Sneasel just cannot hack it.
just because it's 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 stab moves that it should be uh, physical moves, but unfortunately they're all special moves. Yeah. So here's what Beat Up does. It says flip a coin for each of your Pokemon in play, including this one. It does 20 damage times the number of heads. So if you had a five on your bench and what in your Sneasel, that's a maximum of six. So if you got six heads, that's 140 damage. And it only costs like two energies to use that. Really? Oh, here's the Slow King I was talking about. It was banned for a powerful ability resulting from a misprint. Even though it, was, it wasn't immediately banned, the Slow King introduced in Neo Genesis was the next card to be removed from Modified about a year later in 2002. This was due to a misprint allowing Slow King's ability, Mind Games, to be used from the bench. The ability allows players to flip a coin whenever their opponent played a trainer card. If it landed on heads, the opponent's card would do nothing and get placed on top of the deck. This means that players could use multiple Slow Kings from the bench to heavily control the odds of a trainer card being played successfully, limiting their opponent's ability to search and draw. This made Slow King a dominant force in the meta, with many games coming down to who could set up their Slow Kings first and control the match. So I have made a very grave error. I have, what did you do? Uh, unfortunately, I have Aerodactyled the um, Sabrina. Uh, that I... wasn't Aerodactyling. You just pulled a Furret. Mm. Well, anyways, so I kept on battling the Sabrina, and unfortunately, the reason why I was so distraught there was because I had apparently not gotten Koga's badge yet, so when I thought I was badge boosting my speed, I was not. Uh, that, that means we get a third run today. Yeah, you might be a bit too distracting. Hey, these are interesting fun facts. I See, the problem is I didn't play the TCG after the Game Boy Color game. So, unfortunately, these facts are not pr prominent to me. I'll look up a list of, uh, what's this? Oh, the promo card was when Pokemon 2000 was. Yeah, that one. Let's see. Alright, I'll look at this. Uh, 25 Yu-Gi-Oh cards so strong they got banned. Because I'm kind of interested. Alright, number 25 is uh, Yata Garasu. Sounds familiar, we... but I... I again... it's, like a, it's like a purple bird. See, here's the problem with with looking up this stuff. This stuff assumes that I have been you've been playing since the very beginning, and that uh, you've been keeping up with everything since then. Unfortunately, when I play games, I play them for a certain period of time, and then I stop playing them, and my knowledge goes away with that time period. So, at, no matter what, no, you were talking gonna... a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh earlier, right? Uh, because it was based on the TV show. Where a lot of people have uh, seen it. Also, I have just remembered now that the rare candy that I did not pick up was the strength rare candy. How dare you? I used turn one to set up swords dance. And you use Disable and manage to Disable Body Slam. Funny. How dare you? Koga better be real easy now. You know what? I th I'm going to look up uh, all, the l all the glitches in red and blue and see if there's something I don't know about. Are you for real? Poison? I don't want to go back and heal. So you know what? We've got enough resets. Let's just let's just try Coco Poison. Are you pulling uh, a uh, Kaboot uh, Kaboot tops from three seconds ago? 
Booyah. Three setups. All right, and I definitely should outspeed Koga's Pokemon because they're all extremely slow. Oh, here's something. In Gen 1, attempting to withdraw a level 1 Pokemon using the medium slow growth rate algorithm will actually softlock the game. This also applies to Pokemon using the medium fast for level 255, fast for 255, and slow for 237. Certain glitch Pokemon use invalid growth experience groups and have the game freeze when they are withdrawn at certain levels. For example, in red and blue, the M00 glitch Pokemon uses an invalid experience curve 26 and then the game will freeze if the player attempts to withdraw a level 0 one. Additionally, if a Pokemon in the medium slow group is between 245 and 255, it will become a Pokemon with the level between 59 and 125, depending on the level. A Pokemon in the slow group that is withdrawn between 238 and 255 will become a Pokemon with a level between 39 and 146. I have no idea what causes this at all. That's weird. I have squandered this run. Is it my fault distracting you? No. Maybe. Only a little bit. It probably is, yeah. But hey, it's all about fun, right? Alright. Um, we won't level up after Venomoth. We have 145 speed. Oh, that's way, way more than we need. Perfect. Oh, here's something interesting. In the Gen 1 games, if the player saves its cycling road and then creates a new game, it will not be possible to use the bicycle or surf anywhere until the glitch is fixed. If the player attempts to do either, it'll fail and the game will display the same error message that would appear if the player tried to do this in cycling road itself. It wouldn't surprise me if, if someone tried this as a kid, they were in cycling road, they save the game, they're like, e you know what, I'm going to start a new game. And then they get the bike, and then they wonder why they can't get on the bike. Who finds this stuff out? There, uh, there's a lot of people here. It's just such niche things. Hey, you're the one who found out the rage being 0% accurate glitch. Wasn't I wasn't attempting to find glitches though. I mean, then again, like no one will ever know that because no one in their right mind would use rage. And also, we don't know if the the glitch is specifically to Kangaskhan. That's a good question. Like, I don't think anything else naturally learns rage by level up. Uh, Maybe Charizard. Oh, right. I forgot about that. We should test that with Charizard sometime. We should not. You know, you know how, how useless extra knowledge is about rage? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and here's it's one. Even, it's not even good information, too. <laughs> hey, uh, Steve, you uh, may not need to worry in our runs about not having enough money for the fresh water, because there's actually a glitch for it. If the player has enough money to buy a fresh water, but you can't afford a soda pop or lemonade, the vending machine atop the Celadon department store will still allow the drinks to be purchased. It'll just bring your money down to zero dollars. So, if you only had $200, you can still purchase a soda pop. I actually did know that, but um, that was from one of the, the that YouTube guy who makes videos about un ridiculous facts that you never think of. Let's see. Do you know about the invisible PC? No. Uh, the Celadon Hotel in... Uh, Celadon City, the layout's based on a Pokemon Center. If you stand where the PC would be, you can still access an invisible PC. 
And there are also invisible PCs in the same position in Safari Zone Rest Houses 2, 3, and 4. But these positions are not normally accessible. Because they're like out of bounds. I don't get the Safari Zone houses. Like, the layout's not based on the Pokemon Center. No, they're saying they copy and pasted them. Oh, really? Hmm. I do it all the time. Copy, paste stuff, and then rearrange it. Do you remember what time I managed to get? Was it like 102? Yeah, it was 102, I think. I want to say it's looking like I'm probably going to get like a 58. Not really much of an improvement. You better do a third run. I have a feeling if I were to do this run again, and I were to do it as best as possible, I, oof, it, it's still rough to say. I mean, the middle of the game toward Misty is quite annoying because I have to oh, I have to do all that extra training to be able to beat Misty, which is causing me a lot of time loss. You know, uh, you know, on in the uh, the the gate on uh, to the right of Fuchsia, you use it to enter that route. If you go to the top floor and there's some binoculars, one of them you'll actually see like an Articuno, and it'll play its cry. Apparently, if you play the cry over and over again, it becomes slowly corrupted. <laughs> I believe that. Um, have you ever tried using the uh, the walkthrough walls cheat? Or the glitch with the Safari Zone? No, just the like what turned your game uh, track on and, and used it. Yeah, actually, All... in a game hook, there's actually a property you can actually uh, set to one, and when you freeze it, it allows you to walk through walls. Huh. Well, um, this walk through walls cheat. It, like it, once you start walking through some specific walls, then uh. All of the character models start changing to like be glitchy and like not their normal selves. Yeah. You know what's interesting? You know in the uh, Japanese version of uh, red and green, and I think Japanese blue as well, whenever you go in the elevator and select what floor to go to, you can actually use the select button to switch the positions of the elevator. And just completely screw up the game. Boy, maybe I should consider trying Leer, guys. I think that'll that'll definitely make the run that much better. Yeah. Oh, I actually knew about this glitch right here. Uh, it you know how in a Pokemon Yellow, in order to get the Bulbasaur, your Pikachu needs to have high friendship. No, I didn't know that. Oh, I just thought, since you played yellow many times. Yeah, they always just gave it to me. Oh, yes, it was high enough. I actually knew about this glitch. I used it to my advantage. Uh, if you use a potion on your Pikachu over and over, even if it's at full HP, its friendship will still go up. So just use a potion like 20 times, it'll do nothing, and then your Pikachu just straight up loves you. Oh. I used that to get the Bulbous Thor. Click down too many times. We're gonna ignore ignore the guy who accidentally used slash on a ride on. Wow, that was extremely fortunate. It used reflect, which you know most likely probably doesn't matter because of how much attack stat I'm I'm currently up to. But I also got the crit on top of it, so it was never going to stand a chance. Alright, anyways, now we know to use our rare candies right before Agatha, so that will definitely save us a little bit of time. But uh, 58 is going to be real close. Yeah, probably. You know, I looked all over Bulbapedia. That whole rage with sand attack thing is never mentioned. 
Why would it? Who in the world would test that? It's like the bike thing. Like, who, who in the world would test that? Somebody did it by accident, and it just happens. I'm gonna look up stuff for uh, Crystal. See, the other thing is you also have to, you have to know what just happened, too. Yeah. I think the one thing about this no XP run that has uh, improved my game is now I know exactly what half of these trainers have in Victory Road. Okay. Top quiz. Where's the guy with just a Mr. Mime? I said half of them. Oh, wait. Okay, uh, I'll that, give that you a guy different... over here, right over to my right. Nope. Okay, well. <laughs> I know that I know this you guy's failed. got three water I types. I know that girl's got three poison grass types. Okay. What does that and, trainer on screen have? And I know that that guy's got four psychic types. And the guy right over here has got three uh three fighting types. Okay then. Okay. Well, my inventory is full, so I'm not gonna be able to fit. So. Huh, you know what's interesting? Uh, in a uh, gold and silver, since uh. Since gold and silver were coded with uh, the database of red and blue, yellow hadn't came out yet. So in gold and silver, you can actually still fish in the gym statues. Cool. If you ever need to find a Magikarp. I don't know where to look. Yes, you missed Clamp this time. Awesome. Ooh, I oh, here's something. Okay. Here's something. In Crystal, if the player whites out due to poison damage while still inside the Dragon Shrine at Dragon's Den after receiving the Rising Badge, they can return to the Blackthorn Gym to receive the reward TM from Claire. However, due to an oversight, if the player then returns to the Dragon's Den, stands on the tile directly in front of the Dragon Shrine door, Claire will appear again and give you another TM as if you already hadn't received it. So I guess in a Crystal Solo run, if you need two Dragon Breath TMs, there you go. Well, this will be embarrassing if this ends up happening. Oh my god. Lose to Bruno. Lose to Bruno. No, all oh, useful. Oh, We're all good. He, We're all good. Bruno, Bruno did Bruno, Bruno things. Bruno, you had that win. Come on, I'm disappointed in you. Oh, Bruno, you didn't level me up. Now you're gonna make me waste my rare candies that I just, just. Oh wait, I only have ten. Oh my god, the strength rare candy. I didn't pick up the strength rare candy once again. Oh, Bruno, you made me waste so much. I was at 60 last time I fought, fought Agatha. I didn't I didn't get anything extra by doing that training in Blaine's gym. It's all Bruno's fault. Here's a fun fact. Uh, you know how in uh, Pokemon Stadium, you can actually transfer, like, Pokemon and items to, like, your Gen 1 game? Uh, Used in the transfer pack? I mean, I knew you could transfer things to Stadium. Uh, you can actually transfer things to the game as well. It was like the OG Pokemon Home. Uh, if you actually transferred over a Freshwater to a Pokemon Blue save, you could actually enter S Saffron City with only one gym badge. <laughs> Sounds like something to do on Gamehook. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of do it with a randomizer, like if uh, the map, like if the town map girl gives us tea. Sweet. Ooh. Oh, 58 is gonna be really cutting it close. All right, do a little speedrunner thing by going up to the right. I don't Actually, think I'm not gonna a speed make thing. I just do that for. I just do that for to make it easy on me so I don't accidentally talk to him. 
Oh, no, not speed run as in, like, this is a strategy. Speed run as in you. I've actually been considering trying a Pokemon Stadium Rental Randomizer. What's the it whole goal? Like, beat very the gym leader castle or, like, all beat the, the whole gym leader castle. Okay, that's more manageable. I, I used to speedrun gym leader castle. Like, I remember uh, a lot of the gym leaders were kind of pretty easy. I remember Gio some of Giovanni's trainers were pretty difficult. I think the first rocket has a Moltres. I love how you brought that up because I this is actually information that is fresh in my mind. Uh, Giovanni's gym trainers are... Or sorry, Sa Sabrina and Giovanni's gym trainers are, are big holdups to the randomizer. Yeah. Is there a rule where you have to do it from Brock to Giovanni, or can you do any order? I didn't know you could do it in any other order. Uh, yeah, if you've already beaten the Gym Leader Castle, you can, like, rematch them if you want no, to. No, no, so it you has do to be a order. fresh game. Darn it. Because I know in speedruns you can do it with, like, a already completed save file. Speedrunners actually start at Giovanni because he's the hardest. No crit, no crit, no crit. Oh my god. Hey, a crit. Hey, sub 58. Alright, well, I think that's, that's Time the, for the maximum third one. we're going to get. Honestly, I, I feel like even if I had played this better, at the very best, I can shave off two minutes. Okay, I tried out that random Pokemon generator. Uh, it apparently, for my first... Gym leader, I'm given Paris, Golduck, Dugtrio, Marowak, Hitmonlee, and Kabuto. So, interestingly enough, um, the, the guy that I watch do it on Twitch, he, um, he has his chat able to kill team by donations. He also has it if it re if there's this, um, like, for him it's donate 50 subs, but, uh, you know, for any of us, it's automatic Magikarp on the team as one of your six. It does not stack. You cannot. Yes, I never you cannot use just, magic card. I know, but it's it's essentially means your team is five Pokemon. It's a very interesting way of going about it. Also, he did a hundred subs means you have to use the magic card. Oh, I'm gonna look at Paris's moveset. Hmm. Uh, but Paris and Parasect are kind of good. Spore, cool Solar Beam, Dead. Uh, if there's any Pokemon you have absolutely no idea of its real potential, apparently Pikachu, very good at soloing all three legendary birds. Thunderbolt, Seismic Toss, Slam, and Thunder Wave. Well, yeah, I can definitely is, see that. Strat is typically use Thunder Wave to start. Thunderbolt will be good on anything but Zapdos, but for Zapdos you could use Seismic Toss. Oh man, the Raichu is worse. The Raichu is Thunder, Thunder Wave, Mega Kick, and Flash. Oh, that's way, way better. Flash? No, you get Thunder. See, I understand that people have this thing about not liking Thunder and whatnot, but in Pokemon Stadium, you you deal with what you have, and Thunder is still technically a high damage move. And with Stab, it's pretty good. I mean, but, yeah, um, but I just remember in a speedruns, like, you just use nothing but thunder. If your randomizer gives you either Mewtwo or Mew, you get a free choice. And I'm telling you right now, the best Pokemon in the entire game, hands down, not even questionable, is Jolteon. Oh, yeah, it's used in the speedruns a lot. Thunderbolt and, yeah, the Thunderbolt. No, thunder. No, in Pokemon Stadium, it has Thunderbolt. I'm telling you right now, I've watched enough, enough. Oh, I'm guessing Bulbapedia it is wrong. It's Thunder. Oh, uh, Bulbapedia is probably wrong. Because I remember Jolteon having Thunder. Because it was on one of the speedrun teams. Right. It has Thunder. Um, I forget. It has a second move in Double Kick, but Double Kick is useless. Oh, Double Kick and Pin Missile? Avoid them. I don't care... The only time to use Double Kick is against, obviously, a Ground Rock type, which you would probably switch out against. Pin Missile, trust me. Even though, technically, Pin Missile is super effective against, like, Alakazam and whatnot, Thunder is just straight better. Jolteon's attack mm. stat is awful, and uh, Thunder is just that much better. Hmm. 
Oh, yeah, this... Yeah, Bulbapedia is very wrong on these rentals, because I'm pretty sure Alakazam does not have Psybeam. No, it has uh, Confusion. Uh, it, actually, okay, I those... thought it had Psywave. No, uh, it has Confusion. I already know these for a fact, because I've watched him play very many, many, many attempts. I could probably tell you the moveset of all of the Evolved Pokemon. But anyways, uh, maybe Bulbapedia is not thinking about the Gym Leader Cup. Maybe it's thinking about the Cup Cups. Well, we finally figured out what Speed does when he's bored. Hey, when I'm bored, I'm probably playing Tears of the Kingdom. I'm just trying to pass time on the voice call. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for joining up, joining us today. Um, let me go ahead and see what run I am doing tomorrow. Um, I have already forgotten. I actually voted for Shuckle, but I don't think it won. I don't think it did either. Pseudo Wudo. Darn it. You know, I'm not opposed to Pseudo Wudo. I'm going to look up its moveset for you. Okay. I like Pseudo Wudo. I think it's probably playable, right? Uh, It starts with Mimic and Rock Throw by level up. And Mimic is... They really nerfed it in Gen 2. It's really not worth using. And then from level up, it gets Flail, Low Kick, Rock Slide, Feint Attack, and Slam. But your only egg move choice is Self-Destruct. <laughs> yeah, this is not that good. Oh, but hey, Rock Slide. Self-Destruct? Sounds like a good egg move. That's just so insulting. And you could What's get faint attack, more which is uh. Insulting is they yeah. gave it all of the punches and thirty special attack. So uh, insulting. That's a big troll. Yeah, why even bother? That's dude. Your physical attack is three times higher. Okay. I think like I think a thirty base power physical move would do more damage than a ninety base power special move. Okay, so interestingly enough, it has. Two times weakness to water, two times weakness to grass, which, you know, it takes its bad special into account. But its other weaknesses, fighting, ground, and steel, are all physical, which are actually not that bad of weaknesses with 115 defense. So really, right, like I just need to, I need to be able to deal with water types and grass types. So do I have a move that can deal with water and grass types? Is the question. Not the elemental punches, that's for sure. Uh, it looks like your best moves by TM are uh, Rollout, Return, uh, Earthquake, Earthquake, Dig. That's really about it. Oh, Mud Slap. Okay, well, Earthquake can deal with the grass types. On, Unfortunately, uh, my weakness is going to be water. I have absolutely nothing to deal with water types. Yeah, I predict your final move set's gonna be a uh, rock slide, return, earthquake, and uh, probably uh, protect or curse. Actually, pseudo wudo would work really well with curse. It has pretty good defense, okayish special defense, and already pathetic speed. So I think curse will really work with pseudo wudo. Let's see my Gen two rankings. Um, boy. I'm definitely predicting somewhere in that 215, 230 range, I would guess. I'm going to predict it is, uh, it's going to get power 59. Wow. You see it? Yeah. Did you say that because you're looking at the Houndoom? Yeah, plus I just want to say that Pseudo Wudo will be better than Lugia. Well, Dude, how is your Lugia time so bad compared to ho -Oh? It was my first run ever. You need to redo that. I do. I also need to redo um, Paracross for the simple fact that I didn't know I had a four times weakness to fighting. You mean flying? Flying, yes. That's what I said. Okay. It started with F. I got. I was close. Yeah. 
Okay, guys. Anyways, thank you very much for joining. We will be. I will be on again tomorrow at. Uh, I think I delayed it one hour. Um, uh, I definitely delayed. I'll check the your uh, community tab. Let's see. You delayed it to. Uh, 7 p.m. Uh, so I delayed it an hour. Oh. Oh, so that's actually not that bad. I'll be able to chime in while I'm working. I won't be on voice call, though, but I'll listen. Anyways, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I will be on again tomorrow. Have a nice night.